Cinderella. Once upon a time, the wife of a certain rich man fell very ill, and as she felt her end drawing nigh, she called her only daughter to her bedside, and said, My dear child, be pious and good, and then the good God will always protect you, and I will look down upon you from heaven and think of you. Soon afterwards she closed her eyes and died. Every day the maiden went to her mother's grave and wept over it, and she continued to be good and pious. But when the winter came, the snow made a white covering over the grave, and in the springtime, when the sun had withdrawn this covering, the father took to himself another wife. This wife brought home with her two daughters, who were beautiful and fair in the face, but treacherous and wicked at heart. Then an unfortunate era began in the poor stepchild's life. Shall the stupid goose sit in the parlor with us, said the two daughters. They who would eat bread must earn it, out with the kitchen maid. So they took off her fine clothes, and put upon her an old gray cloak, and gave her wooden shoes for her feet. See how the once proud princess is decked out now, said they, and they led her mockingly into the kitchen. Then she was obliged to work hard from morning to night, and to go out early to fetch water, to make the fire, and cook and scour. The sisters treated her besides with every possible insult, derided her, and shook the peas and beans into the ashes, so that she had to pick them out again. At night, when she was tired, she had no bed to lie on, but was forced to sit in the ashes on the hearth, and because she looked dirty through this, they named her Cinderella. One day it happened that the father wanted to go to the fair, so he asked his two daughters what he should bring them. Some beautiful dresses, said one. Pearls and precious stones, replied the other. But you, Cinderella, said he, what will you have? The first bow, father, that knocks against your hat on your way home, let's break it off for me, she replied. So he brought the fine dresses and the pearls and precious stones for his two stepdaughters, and on his return, as he rode through a green thicket, a hazel bough touched his hat, which he broke off and took with him. As soon as he got home, he gave his stepdaughters what they had wished for, and to Cinderella he gave the hazel branch. She thanked him very much, and going to her mother's grave, she planted the branch on it, and wept so long that her tears fell and watered it, so that it grew and became a beautiful tree. Thrice a day Cinderella went beneath it to weep and pray, and each time a little white bird flew on the tree, and if she wished aloud, the little white bird flew down to her whatever she wished for. After a time it fell out that the king appointed a festival, which was to last three days, and to which all the beautiful maidens in the country were invited, from whom his son was to choose a bride. When the two stepdaughters heard that they might also appear, they were very glad, and, calling Cinderella, they said, Comb our hair, brush our shoes, and fasten our buckles, for we are going to the festival at the king's palace. Cinderella obeyed, crying, because she wished to go with them to the dance, so she asked her stepmother whether she would allow her. You, Cinderella, said she, you are covered with dust and dirt. Will you go to the festival? You have no clothes or shoes, and how can you dance? But, as she urged her request, the mother said at last, I have now shaken into the ashes a tub full of beans. If you have picked them up again in two hours, you shall go. Then the maiden left the room and went out at the back door into the garden, and called out, You tame pigeons and doves and all you birds of heaven, come and help me to gather the good into the tub and the bad ones you may eat. Presently in at the kitchen window came two white pigeons, and after them the doves, and soon all the birds under heaven flew chirping in the down upon the ashes. Then they began to pick, 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 and gathered all the good seeds into the tub, and scarcely an hour had passed when all was completed, and the birds flew away again. Then the maiden took the tub to the stepmother, rejoicing at the thought that she might now go to the festival. But the stepmother said, No, Cinderella, you have no clothes and cannot dance. You will only be laughed at. As she began to cry, the stepmother said, If you could pick up quite clean two tubs of beans, which I throw amongst the ashes in one hour, you shall accompany them. And she thought to herself, She will never manage it. As soon as the two tubs had been shot into the ashes, Cinderella went out at the back door into the garden, and called out as before, You tame pigeons and doves and all you birds under heaven, come and help me to gather the good ones into the tubs and the bad ones you may eat. 
Presently in at the kitchen window came two white pigeons, and after them the doves, and soon all the birds under heaven flew chirping in and down upon the ashes. Then they began to pick, 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 and gathered all the good seeds into the tubs, and scarcely had half an hour passed before all was picked up, and off they flew again. The maiden now took the tubs to the stepmother, rejoicing at the thought that she could go to the festival. But the mother said, It does not help you a bit. You cannot go with us, for you have no clothes and cannot dance. We should be ashamed of you. Thereupon she turned her back upon the maiden and hastened away with her two proud daughters. As there was no one at home, Cinderella went to her mother's grave under the hazel tree and said, Wrestle and shake yourself, dear tree, and silver and gold throw down to me. Then the bird threw down a dress of gold and silver, and silken slippers ornamented with silver. These Cinderella put on in great haste, and then she went to the ball. Her sisters and stepmother did not know her at all, and took her for some foreign princess, as she looked so beautiful in her golden dress. For of Cinderella they thought not, but that she was sitting at home, picking the beans out of the ashes. Presently the prince came up to her, and, taking her by the hand, led her to the dance. He would not dance with anyone else, and even would not let go of her hand, so that when anyone else asked her to dance, he said, She is my partner. They danced till evening, when she wished to go home, but the prince said, I will go with you and see you safe, for he wanted to see to whom the maiden belonged. She flew away from him, however, and sprang into the pigeon house, so the prince waited till the father came, whom he told that the strange maiden had run into the pigeon house. Then the stepmother thought, could it be Cinderella? And they brought an axe wherewith the prince might cut open the door, but no one was found within. And when they came into the house, there lay Cinderella in her dirty clothes among the ashes, and an oil lamp was burning in the chimney. For she had jumped quickly out on the other side of the pigeon house, and had run to the hazel tree, where she had taken off her fine clothes and laid them on the grave, and the bird had taken them again. And afterwards she had put on her little gray cloak and seated herself among the ashes in the kitchen. The next day, when the festival was renewed, and her stepmother and her sisters had set out again, Cinderella went to the hazel tree and sang as before, Wrestle and shake yourself, dear tree, and silver and gold throw down to me. Then the bird threw down a much more splendid dress than the former, and when the maiden appeared at the ball, everyone was astonished at her beauty. The prince, however, who had waited till she came, took her hand and would dance with no one else, and if others came and asked, he replied as before, She is my partner. As soon as evening came, he wished to she wished to depart, and the prince followed her, wanting to see into whose house she went. But she sprang away from him and ran into the garden behind the house. Therein stood a fine large tree on which hung the most beautiful pears, and the boughs rustled as though a squirrel was among them. But the prince could not see whence the noise proceeded. He waited, however, till the father came and told him, The strange maiden has escaped from me, and I think she has climbed up into this tree. The father thought to himself, Can it be Cinderella? And taking an axe, he chopped down the tree, but there was no one on it. When they went into the kitchen, there lay Cinderella among the ashes as before, for he, she had sprung down on the other side of the tree, and having taken her beautiful clothes again to the bird upon the hazel tree, she had put on once more her old gray cloak. The third day, when her stepmother and her sisters had set out, Cinderella went again to her mother's grave and said, Rustle and shake yourself, dear tree, and silver and gold throw down to me. Then the bird threw down to her a dress which was more splendid and glittering than she had ever had before, and the slippers were all golden. When she arrived at the ball, they knew not what to say for wonderment, and the prince danced with her alone as at first, and replied to everyone who asked her hand, She is my partner. As soon as evening came, she wished to go, and as the prince followed her, she ran away so quickly that he could not overtake her. But he had contrived a stratagem, and spread the whole way with pitch, so that it happened as the maiden ran that her slipper came off. The prince took it up, and saw it was small and graceful and quite golden, so the following morning he went with it to the father, and said, My bride shall be no other than she whose foot this golden slipper fits. The two sisters were glad of this, for they had beautiful feet, and the elder went with it to her chamber to try it on, while her mother stood by. She could not, however, get her great toe into it, and the shoe was much too small. But the mother, reaching a knife, said, Cut off your toe, for if you are queen, you need not go any longer on foot. The maiden cut it off, and squeezed her foot into the shoe, and, concealing the pain she felt, went down to the prince. 
Then he placed her as his bride upon her horse and rode off. And as they passed by the grave, there sat two little doves upon the hazel tree singing, Backwards peep, backwards peep, there's blood upon the shoe. The shoe's too small, and she behind is not the bride for you. Then the prince looked behind and saw the blood flowing, so he turned his horse back and took the false bride home again, saying she was not the right one. Then the other sister must needs fit on the shoe, so she went to her chamber and got her toes nicely into the shoe, but the heel was too large. The mother, reaching a knife, said, Cut a piece off your heel, for when you become a queen, you need not go any longer on foot. She cut a piece off her heel, squeezed her foot into the shoe, and, concealing the pain she felt, went down to the prince. Then he put her upon his horse as his bride and rode off, and as they passed the hazel tree, there sat two little doves, who sang, Backwards peep, backwards peep, there's blood upon the shoe. The shoe's too small, and she behind is not the bride for you. Then he looked behind and saw the blood trickling from her shoe, and that the stocking was dyed quite red. So he turned his horse back and took the false bride home again, saying, Neither is this one the right maiden. Have you no other daughter? No, replied the father, except a little Cinderella, daughter of my deceased wife, who cannot possibly be the bride. The prince asked that she might be fetched, but the stepmother said, Oh no, she is much too dirty. I dare not let her be seen. But the prince would have his way. So Cinderella was called, and she, first washing her hands and face, went in and curtsied to the prince, who gave her the golden shoe. Cinderella sat down on a stool, and taking off her heavy wooden shoes, put on the slipper, which fit her to a shade. And as she stood up, the prince looked her in the face, and, recognizing the beautiful maiden with whom he had danced, exclaimed, This is my rightful bride. The stepmother and the two stepsisters were amazed and white with rage, but the prince took Cinderella upon his horse and rode away. And as they came up to the hazel tree, the two little white doves sang, Backwards peep, backwards peep, there's no blood on the shoe. It fits so nice, and she behind is the true bride for you. And as they finished, they flew down and lighted upon Cinderella's shoulders, and there they remained. And the wedding was celebrated with great festivities, and the two sisters were smitten with blindness as a punishment for their wickedness. Alright, so, before I just call it quits on this, I wanted to talk about it a little bit, because let's be honest here, this story is a little ridiculous. So, alright, so, stepmother dies... And he get, and the stepfather gives her, you know, this twig that hits his hat. And she buries it on the grave. And just like that, lickety-split, because she cried on, cried on it, it grew. Now, this one, I, I, I can forgive this because, you know, magic, ghosts, paranormal activity. Sure, tree grew. Whatever. But, like, yeah, I don't know. And then there's, like, a little white bird, and it throws down to her whatever she wishes for. Where's the bird getting this? I mean, like, whatever she wishes for from the bird, the bird gives it to her, but where is she getting, where's the bird getting whatever it's giving to Cinderella? Like, that just seems odd, to say the least. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, it probably isn't. That means the bird's stealing from somewhere all these really fine dresses. Speaking of which, who wears golden dresses. That is so tacky. Ew. I would not be impressed by, well, I guess technically back then I would be impressed by a really ostentatious golden dress because holy crow, you have to be rich as death to wear a bright golden dress and golden slippers. And speaking of the slippers, yes, daughter one, number one, cut off your heel, cut off your toe. That seems a little ridiculous. Not to mention, that's sure to stain the slipper. And the prince didn't see it the first time? Like, these two sisters are, like, leaking blood from their feet. He didn't see the blood gushing through the slipper? I'm assuming the slipper was not, in fact, made from glass and was, in fact, made from fabric. Which means that that blood would have so stained the golden slipper. Not to mention, he threw pitch down to catch her. How stupid is this prince that every single time, she went to the same exact house every single time. If they saw Cinderella on the floor, I mean, I'm assuming they don't have very many other maids. She was probably the only person home. She had to look somewhat similar to herself in the gown. 
not that big of a difference when you get a little dirty, unless her hair was, like, smudged to a different color. Pitch? Really? He threw down pitch? Why not just, I don't know, order her to stay? You're a prince, man. Come on, pitch! And she just, oh, they, they, and they're a little outrageous on how, I'm trying to catch her. Well, she's in the pigeon house. Better take an axe and chop it down. Really? Same thing with the pear tree. It's a pear tree. And she jumped down out the other side of a pear tree and he didn't see it. She's wearing a golden dress. That kind of thing isn't easy to hide. It's super bright. It's not like she's blending in with the golden trees and the golden grass. And then, let's see. What else was weird? There was a lot. I was reading this and I was like, really? Really? Oh, and then... You know, let's not question the talking birds. Uh, let's let's just worry about finding, you know, Cinderella. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure these sisters don't look anything like what Cinderella looked like when she was in her dress. Like, let's be honest here. Let's... Really? I mean, at least this isn't as ridiculous as the Disney version where he goes through all the women in the country fitting a shoe. Cinderella's foot is not so weirdly shaped that not one other person would have the same size as her. You get me? You, you, you with me? It's just kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm just psycho. But yeah, this is Weird Cinderella for you by the Grimm Brothers. This is the original Grimm Brothers Cinderella story and analysis. It's a little silly. But it is a fairy tale, and, like, seriously, all the fairy tales are like that. They Sometimes you read them, and you're just like, Really? Pitch? Really? You couldn't have just, I don't know, told her to stay? I'm pretty sure she would have stayed if you said you were gonna marry her, like... And why did she run? Oh, no, I don't want him to know who I am so that we could, like, elope or something, and I could... And the dad doesn't even care. Oh, no, it's just Cinderella. You don't want to see Cinderella. Pff, she's, like, ugly and stuff. How upsetting. Anyways, I gotta go to work, so I'll talk to you guys later. 